Hello, BookTube. All right, after a short delay, we are back to our library tour. <laughs> we are still doing biography. I have a lot of biographies. It's my favorite kind of book. Uh, and we are now on to the last leg of our biography marathon because it's just the one more bookcase. I wish that it were more. I wish that, that I had at least two more bookcases on this wall uh, full of biographies instead of all the ungainly stacking that's going on here. In fact, two more bookcases probably wouldn't give me room for any more books. It would just mean that I could, I could stop laterally stacking books and put them on shelves where they belong. I will get to that eventually. That will sooner or later happen. You never know what you're going to find for bookcases. You'd be a fool to buy one new. So you just have to keep an eye out for, you know, secondhand bookcases. I often find them discarded on the sidewalk because nobody reads anymore. <laughs> but none of the ones that I've found make the right combination to finish this wall. Uh, and that means that... Uh, for the top shelf of this last bookcase, we're dealing with a lot of laterally stacked books. Like, like most people who have too many books, I don't use bookends. Why would you do that when books form perfect bookends? So for the top shelf of this bookcase, where I would ordinarily have a bookend here and a bookend there, instead I have two lateral stacks of books holding in place a, a, you know, a vertical stack of books. So that, so that the lateral stacks of books just have a tendency to just keep climbing towards the ceiling. So. Um, we're going to deal with, I think what I want to do now is deal with uh, the first lateral stack, the lateral stack books in the middle, and then the middle books, and then we'll save the last stack for next time. Uh, and the first one, I think a lot of these will be fairly new because, of course, you know, they're available stacking area. So you just, when you're done, when, you, when you're done with something new, you put it right there instead of working it in. I've done some working in, but uh, first lateral stack is something that I loved, a book that I absolutely loved, uh, and this is Mr. Straight Arrow. Uh, Jeremy Trigon's biography of John Hersey, the author of Hiroshima and the author of a bunch of other stuff too. And this is a, this is a literary life. It's his biography, but his life was literary almost from the, from the get-go. So a literary life covers everything. And uh, it's amazingly well done. I, uh, I read it, <clears throat> even though I'm not Hersey's biggest fan as a writer, I, I read it and loved it uh, and had the great treat of reviewing it uh, for the, the Martha's Vineyard Gazette. Uh, Hersey spent a lot of time on Martha's Vineyard, and that made this a likely candidate. And so I got to review it uh, for my favorite small pa small town newspaper. <laughs> it was tremendous fun to do. Uh, okay, this next one we've seen already. This is Bernard Bailyn's The Ordeal of Thomas Hutchinson. Uh, I found this uh, just recently, I think a month ago. And this is his groundbreaking biography about the royal governor of Massachusetts during the American Revolution. And the, as the title suggests, it's meant to make him human. It's meant to make him three-dimensional. It's meant to point out that he lost as much as anybody in the revolution and that, that wasn't, there was nothing evil about that. It's, uh, it's eye-opening. <laughs> Even after all this time, it's eye-opening. And I don't know, I know this is heresy, uh, but I think it's Bernard Bailyn's best book. I mean, I would anyway think that because it's a, a full-dress biography, but still. <laughs> and then talk about a full-dress biography. We will look at the size of this thing. <laughs> This is Jeremy Wilson's authorized biography of Lawrence of Arabia. And it, this is uh, the UK hardcover. Uh, from who? Who did this? Uh, oh, this might not even be UK. Well, one way or another, the, uh, the American version of this is literally a third the size. <laughs> it's just the American trade paperback. Doesn't look like it's a trade paperback of the same book at all. If you look at the two things together, you would assume that half or more of this book was edited out of the American version, and that's not true. Uh, it's just that this is really huge, and I like the look of it, so I grabbed it uh, as the, the volume that I want to have. Uh, okay, all right, this next one is Kate Hubbard's biography of Bess of Hardwick. This is Devices and Desires, why anybody would call a book that, I have no idea. Uh, it ought to be there ought to be a moratorium of at least 25 years on calling a book Devices and Desires, but the book itself was really good. Uh, we've already seen Bess of Hardwick, I believe, in this biography tour, which means that this, this book is in the wrong place. She was the foremost landlorder, landowner and the wealthiest person in Elizabethan England. Uh, biographers often like to say she was the wealthiest person after the Queen, but that's not... I've never seen any documentary evidence of that. There's documentary evidence of how wealthy Kate was. Uh, uh, Bess of Hardwick was. And there's also documentary evidence that Queen Elizabeth often didn't have any money. <laughs> didn't have, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure that she wasn't just the greatest wealth owner, the greatest property owner of her day. 
uh, and an amazing person in her own right. This, I, th I thought this was just delightful. Believe I also reviewed it. Uh, I'll, I'll, again, I'll try to remember to leave links to all these things down below. I think I forgot last time. Uh, okay, all right, this is fruit of my, uh, of my uh, Vermont trip. This is Ethan Allen. Uh, this is a, just a, a terrific, energetic biography of a uh, forgotten founding father, and it uh, tormented me. Every time I went to the little farmhouse up in Vermont uh, with Frida for a vacation, every time I went up there, I saw this on Mark Richardson's shelves, and I want it. Uh, but my attempts to abscond with it were serially rebuffed, <laughs> so I had to go out and get a copy of my own. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, all right, this next one, the same thing. This is Edmund, Esmond Wright's uh, uh, one-volume biography of Benjamin Franklin. This is, uh, despite the subtitle of Philadelphia, this is the whole life of Franklin. And uh, it really should be down with the other Franklin books. It's only here because it's a recent acquisition. Uh, oh, okay, all right. Okay. Uh, this, was, this has been so far the big surprise for me in new releases in 2019, the, the reception that this has got, the popularity that it's got. Not, not general reader popularity, but in, in the bookish world, it's been reviewed everywhere. It's got lots of attention. I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, this is George Packer's biography of Dick Holbrook, who was a, a spook in the diplomacy ranks of American Foreign Service forever and ever, and uh, was the man in the room or the instrumental person in some signature diplomatic accords. And uh, Packer makes... This is an, an impassioned and incredibly eloquent book. And he makes the, I guess, tenable case that, that, uh, that Holbrook's life is really some sort of mirror of the nation and its ambitions and its discontents. <laughs> Holbrook would have loved that, but I'm not sure that I completely buy it. But it doesn't matter because the book was so good. The book was just so good. And again, I think I wrote a review. Uh, oh, okay, this next one I did not. Uh, review and I'm sorry about that because I really loved it. Uh, this is a biography of Daniel Chester French called Monument Man by Harold Holzer. There is French in front of what is obviously his signature work. Um, this this was terrific. It's just a terrific artist biography. Not what at all what I've expected Harold Holzer to write and yet I should have uh, and this is Harold Holzer is a writer who will never disappoint you. So, and this didn't disappoint. I thought it was it was really really good. Uh, I'm I'm racking my brains trying to come up with a reason why I didn't write about it. It seems like a natural Steve thing to do. But even I can't write about everything. <laughs> uh, oh great, okay. Uh, uh, this this is uh, what have we got here? I'm also in addition to to. Uh, going through these books, I'm also seeing them for the first time, some of them in a while, and seeing what kind of shape they're in. Uh, this is, shouldn't be here. This is a travel log. This is not biography, so this shouldn't be here. Except that it has so much of the author's autobiography in it, I think that's why I probably initially wanted to put it here. This is by Jamal Majoub, and it's called A Line in the River. And it's a love letter to the city of Khartoum, and his history with the city of Khartoum. Uh, I really ought to set this aside because it doesn't belong here, but it's uh, it's tremendously good. Uh, it's full of just wonderful writing. The thing, that, I mean, it's the the glimpses of life in Khartoum are fascinating anyway. But the thing that that really struck me was the quality of the prose. In fact, the book that it reminded me of not not a lot of you are going to know it. I think uh, is the, the memoirs of V. S. Pritchett which are, are, in my opinion, far, far more effective than anything that he wrote in terms of fiction or in terms of his book reviewing, his essays and whatnot. I think his memoirs are uh, outstandingly good, and uh, this reminded me of that. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't belong here. We'll put it in a separate spot. In the... Oh, oh, fantastic. Okay. All right, we're going a ways back now. Uh, this is from a couple of years ago, I think. Let's see. 2016. Uh, this is the, the Civil Wars of Julia Ward Howe by uh, Elaine Showalter, and it's a, a, a biography of uh, of the author of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And I, when I first heard word that it was coming down the pike, I thought, uh, okay, well, is there is there that much more to Julia Ward Howe than than just that one song? Is there that much more to her that requires? you know, a whole biography, but of course that was a naive way to look at things. There's there's a huge amount more. You could make a great biography out of almost anybody if you're as talented as Elaine Showalter. So this book just, oh, 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 uh, it, it, it thrilled me. 
absolutely thrilled me. I don't know, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head if I reviewed it individually, but it certainly ranked high on that year's list of uh, the best biographies, uh, which is only half a year away now. <laughs> the, the, the definitive ranking of American publications in 12 or 15 genres is only a little bit away. <laughs> but anyway, uh, again, I'll leave links if I remember. Uh, this next one was is uh, a biography of Dr. Joseph Warren. This is the trade paperback of Founding Martyr. Again, another found, another forgotten founding father. Uh, then uh, we have uh, Peter Longridge's biography of Heinrich Himmler. Great huge thing from Oxford in trade paperback. This is uh, a fairly new acquisition here to my biographies because I asked the publicist, Longridge has a new biography, a huge biography of Hitler coming out uh, in the early autumn. And I asked the, the publicist if, if she could send me a copy of the Himmler book because I want to read as much Longridge as possible. He's a major historian, he's a major biographer, and despite the fact that Hitler has been over biography, just egregiously over biography, we do not need as many books about him as we have, we really don't. Uh, but despite that fact, I have a suspicion that Longridge's book will be heavily reviewed in the autumn just because of the stature of the biographer. Uh, and so I wanted to sort of get the scent with, uh, with uh, his his old books. I got I got this one from Oxford. It turns out that uh, that his uh, uh, that Longridge. What else did he do? He did. Uh, oh, I don't think Oxford is going to tell me. Uh, but he he did. Um, I'm I'm blanking now on who it was. He he's written about so much Nazi history. He did a big biography of Himmler. But he also did a big biography, I think it was Goebbels, that he did. And I don't think the Goebbels biography was brought out by Oxford. So I'm, I need to get a copy of that trade paperback, too. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, this next one is a writerly biography. Uh, this is Samuel Johnson and the Life of Writing. It's written by Paul Fussell, who did The, uh, the Great War in Modern Memory, and also Class, a great funny book called Class. Uh, this is just a look at Johnson. Johnson wrote for his whole life. In fact, he is... He is famous, among other things, for his for his line that uh, that none but a fool ever wrote but for money. And uh, he tried his hardest to be a, a wage earning hack for his whole life. And uh, Fussell in this book concentrates on that aspect of his life. So here you won't get as much on Mrs. Thrale or on the you know the various uh, what we would now see as autistic ticks and spasms. You won't get as much on that as you will on where did he work, who, what work was he doing, how much was he paid, and it's fascinating. It's a, it's a, a different kind of a look at Dr. Johnson, so it's, it's fascinating. Uh, okay, now we'll do the, uh, the ones, the, the uh, vertical standing books, and we'll leave the second stack of lateral books for next time. And then we'll be done with this first shelf, and we'll be able to move on. So the, this first one is uh, from this year, uh, it's from early in this year. I think this was January or February. I uh, I loved it. It's uh, it's by Andrew Curran, and it's called Diderot and the Art of Thinking Freely. And it turned out to be one of two books on on Dennis Diderot uh, that came out early in this year. And I uh, I loved it. It's uh, I mean, in one level, on in one sense, it's way too small. Because Diderot had led a long and fascinating life that was fascinating in every detail and for every year. And we have, uh, I have somewhere, uh, Furness's biography of Diderot, a critical biography by the guy who did a great, the greatest biography of E.M. Forster. I have that here somewhere. Uh, but this had a, a, a little bit lighter touch to it that I very much appreciated. Uh, okay, this next one is also, I believe, I, this is also from my, uh, my uh, sojourn in Vermont. Uh, I found the... Uh, Collected Letters of Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Uh, not in any way completely collected letters, but, uh, but uh, enough to, to form a portrait of a life. The author, the, uh, the editor, uh, Stephen Weisman, very intentionally gives us an, an even scope from very young Daniel Patrick Moynihan all the way to the very end of his life. And as a result, it works like the, uh, <clears throat> Like the Willa Cather book that we saw earlier, it works as a really, really well as a biography. Although there is somewhere in this collection an actual biography of Daniel Patrick Moynihan, uh, and once again they should be together. So this is the, once again this bookshelf tour is going to help me to organize these things at least a little. Uh, okay, uh, all right. So this is uh, uh, James Thomas Flexner, 
uh, the great biographer of George Washington, who wrote a one-volume biography called The Indispensable Man, that you will see in every used bookstore, in every flea market, in every yard sale. Uh, and that one-volume biography, The Indispensable Man, was a, a, a shortening of a multi-volume Washington biography, and this is one of the volumes in that, in that multi-volume. This is George Washington in the American Revolution. Uh, and it's just that. It's Washington as the leader of the, of the, the American forces during the Revolution, and it goes into great detail and is fascinating to read. It really is. I'm not, as you know, Washington's biggest fan, but this is a terrific book on him as uh, an inept but prominent military leader. <laughs> uh, okay, this next one is also American Revolution. Boy, I should have an American Revolution shelf. Uh, I, that, that'd be the way to go. Uh, this is Stephen Freed's biography of uh, Benjamin Rush. Again, one of two biographies of Rush that came out right about the same time. I think this was from last year. Uh, this is, was much the more substantial one, much the more uh, comprehensive and better written one. Uh, and right next to it on the shelf, I think, is another standout biography from the same year. I, these probably I just put them here, probably, and they just stayed here. And this is Ramachand Raghua's uh, big biography of Gandhi. This is his follow-up uh, to uh, India after Gandhi and to Gandhi before India. And this is the this is the Gandhi that we know. This is the famous Gandhi and all of the stories involved there. Big, big, fat thing that I, I believe, again, ranked very highly in terms of biographies that year on my world-famous list. Uh, and then the last one here is a paperback. A uh, paperback reprint from Liverite. This is uh, Harvey Sachs' biography of the great conductor Toscanini. Uh, I, I never wrote about this because uh, Liverite, uh, you know, very weird... Uh, turn of events never actually sent it to me not the advanced copy and not the finished copy as far as I know I never got a copy of this until I got the trade paperback uh, so I, I, I didn't get it in time to uh, to read it and study it so that I could pitch it for review so it, I just just went right by me uh, but but I loved it, uh, it it's it's uh, I think the second Tuscanini biography that I've read and uh, much my favorite I liked it a lot uh, I'm not 100% not sure that a paperback should be up here. It's going to take a heck of a beating if it stays here, but the Diderot book is also a paperback, because I don't think I ever got a finished copy of, of Diderot and the Art of Thinking Freely. Or if I did, I got rid of it. Uh, okay, so that's a bit of a confusing ending. I'm going to have to figure out what to do with those things, because if they're here, they're going to get warped out of all recognition. Uh, but anyway, that that does it. That is uh, that is the bulk of, of the biographies on this top shelf. Now, tomorrow we will do at the stack on which the camera is sitting right now, and I'll have to figure out where I'm going to put the camera to do that. Uh, and then we'll be done with this top shelf, and we will just move on shelf by shelf until we're done with biography. Uh, so I will, I will see you then. <laughs> Thank you, book two.